In southwest Scotland, near the town of Dumbarton, a community is struggling to understand a series of strange and tragic events. In the grounds of this imposing manor house is a place that has come to be called the Dog Suicide Bridge. More than 50 dogs have jumped to their deaths from Overton Bridge, but why they jumped is a mystery. So if the dogs are not committing suicide, what might explain their strange behavior on the bridge? Canine psychologist Dr. David Sands was fascinated by the story. As one of the few people in Britain to hold a doctorate in animal behavior, he was uniquely qualified to investigate the mystery of Overton Bridge. What do we know about the bridge? We know 50 dogs at least have lost their lives. Overton Bridge spans a steep-sided valley. The parapets of the bridge are 18 inches thick, and there is a 50-foot fall to the rocky bed of the Overton Burn below. That is a drop. That's not a drop I'd want to make. You know, this is a thing, just, just me as a person, forget a dog. You know, all your senses are on fire. You can smell, you can hear the waterfall. You know, that endlessness of water falling. Uh, I can smell the undergrowth. And the light is, I can see the gothic part of the bridge. I mean, you know, I've looked at the literature, I've looked at pictures, but actually coming to the place for the first time, it, it really is quite, it's, it's got that kind of strange feeling. It's perfectly natural for people to want to look down from a vantage point like this bridge. And I'm wondering if it's the same for dogs. Do they have that same natural curiosity? What's on the other side? Our lead investigator and forensic canine behaviorist, Dr. David Sands, is heading off to conduct an experiment to see which scent could be attracting the dogs to jump from the bridge. I'm well aware that this is not a clinical environment. Uh, this is a field where other animals have scented and there would be other odours around. But it's a good enough environment to actually place these scents down and set up the trials for the experiment. What I've got here are three animal odours for those that have been found at the bridge. In the far one, we have mouse. In the middle one, we've got squirrel. And here we've got mink. And what we want to find out is the ten dogs we've got waiting, which ones they find the most interesting. For this experiment, we chose long-nosed dog breeds, representative of those that leapt from Overton Bridge. That first Dalmatian, it's a real lively character. You know, he runs past and then he doubles back to check out that mink. The terrier's following his nose. You know, look, he's gone straight to the strongest scent and it's the mink again. Border Collie. It's gone for the mink. The black Labrador wants to go and play. He's not interested at all, but he's only a young dog. The Lurcher went straight past. It's far more interested in its owner. Look at that golden retriever go to the mink. Woo! The second Dalmatian now, yeah, he's gone straight to the mink and he showed a lot of interest. That's Border Collie number two. He's gone to the squirrel. It's like squirrel. Terry again went to the mink, no messing about. Oh dear. There goes the blind poodle following his nose. Whoa! 
There was a great deal of potential for chaos in this. Uh, I mean, it's almost like herding cats. These dogs are in a very exciting environment and they just want to play. But once I could get them back into single focus dog mode, then I could see what would get them excited. Yeah, this experiment um, is really designed uh, to show how the dog's minds are working. 75% of the world is about what they can smell. And there was a fantastic bias uh, towards the very strong odour of the mink. You could see there was a reaction there, Ooh, you know, that's a strong smell. That's what we're looking for because we know that these animals have been detected at the bridge. I think it's highly likely in all the cases here at Overton Bridge that it was curiosity that killed the dog. The last owner to lose a dog at the bridge was Donna Cooper, and it was her story that inspired Dr. Sands to investigate this mystery. Donna is determined that no other dog owners will suffer her family's loss. But now, at last, she can explain to her young son, Callum, the tragic death of her family pet. But with Mink still at large in the surrounding countryside, how long will it be before this tragedy reoccurs? Mm -hmm.